Harry, how does it look? Man, man, man. The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Let's go back to that breaking news out of Missouri where a judge has just issued a stay that will allow the state's last remaining abortion clinic to remain open, at least temporarily. Joining us now from St. Louis is Dr. John Torres. He's been on the ground there and has been gathering reaction outside the clinic. What are you hearing there, Dr. John? So when I'm hearing a reaction from both sides here, cheering on both sides, when they got the word that the temporary restraining order was actually granted, what that means for the clinic behind me, which is the Planned Parenthood Clinic, the last remaining abortion service clinic in Missouri, is they're allowed to stay open and provide those abortion services through Tuesday, Tuesday. at 9 a.m. when they're going to have a second hearing. And what the judge said <laughs> is essentially the petitioner has demonstrated that immediate and irreparable harm injury will result if the petitioner's license is allowed to expire. And so he's not allowing that to expire at this point. They're going to have a rehearing on Tuesday okay. at 9 a.m. to determine where to go from there. This fight is definitely not over, and that's what we heard from Planned Parenthood yesterday. But as of today, service as usual. Oh, no fetus can beat us. <laughs> Thank God. All right, so we got a temporary restraining order on the sole remaining abortion clinic uh, in uh, uh, Missouri. And it's not just an abortion clinic. It's, uh, you know, cancer screenings and uh, contraception and wellness exams, STD screening, you know, the whole nine yards. That is what Planned Parenthood does. Three percent of what Planned Parenthood does is actually abortion care. Uh, but of course, you know, they love the fetus. They hate the child. They hate them. And this is a bogus claim anyway, this Missouri thing. Now, you know, all these abortion laws, all these really... Oh, hi, everybody. Happy Friday, you bastards. <laughs> Friday. Let's talk about my uterus. Why? I'm having an abortion right now. <laughs> and if you don't want to have an abortion, if you're anti-abortion, don't have one. But I'm having one right now. This is why you can't see under the desk. <laughs> this is why uh, we put a modesty screen. And uh, we'll never let you see that I am every single day uh, getting knocked up and having an abortion just for the fun of it. Because, you know, women are like Hitler. Yeah, this, these are some of the claims that they're making in court. That women are having an abor abortions for the... And, and this is what Clarence Thomas. Clarence. Clarence Cuckoo Thomas who was accused of sexually harassing many women. Unfortunately, Joe Biden only allowed Anita Hill's testimony. She had three other women that would have said the same thing, but, you know, Biden didn't let it happen. But, okay, that said, uh, you, Clarence Thomas is saying that women are choosing abortion because of eugenics that were just like Hitler. This he actually wrote down as a SCOTUS. A scrotum something, I don't know, uh, some sort of a justice thing. Uh, it was really sick. It was really twisted, this uh, last Supreme Court opinion, which he wrote in the minority uh, on an Indiana law that is, uh, you know, aiming to prevent me from having an abortion right freaking now at my desk, which I find convenient. Grubhub? <laughs> Got nothing on the Randy Road Show. They just come on in. You know, there are people in this audience that actually believe this. They're really. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. There's this guy, Paul Diaz. Check him out on Twitter, man. This guy, he's such a troll, but, you know, everybody goes, don't feed the troll. I, uh, I say in a vacuum, the man will listen to anybody that steps up to the microphone. Therefore, I feed the troll because I don't want a vacuum. That's what the abortion uh, procedure is for. But no, there are people out there that actually believe that women choose to have an abortion while they're, uh, you know, filing their nails. And <laughs> don't think about it. But anyway, Georgia, Mi uh, Mississippi, Kentucky, Ohio, and of course, good old Missouri, uh, Louisiana, a Democratic governor, John Bell Edwards, just signed a heartbeat bill into law. I mean, there, it, it must be an election. You know, must be uh, some sort of an election coming up. Because uh, the love of the fetus is uh, very strong during election cycles. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about cycles. But uh, this is the reason. Missouri is claiming that this particular Planned Parenthood has to be shut down. You know, they always find like um, some sort of uh, 
BS excuse, right, to go around, to go under, to go over the law uh, that actually has been in, in full force and effect for, I don't know, 40, 50 years at this point. No, I've, ne I've never lived in a world without Roe v. Wade. I just never have. Uh, and so it, it, this is just uh, frightening, really. But uh, you have a governor in Missouri who's saying that uh, the clinic, the clinic, it's called Reproductive Health Ser Services of Planned Parenthood in St. Louis, uh, they have serious, serious health concerns, violations, health violations. So we wanted to know what they were. Here's what they are. Uh, according to Planned Parenthood, if the clinic in St. Louis that you're in front of wants to continue pro providing abortions, the Missouri Health Department requires the clinic to do a number of things. Uh, do we know what those are? Yeah. And what the judge called yesterday in the hearing sticking points, meaning things during the investigation by the State Department of Health and Senior Services, that they said they couldn't renew the license because of these. One of the sticking points was a minor issue. It was expiration of a uh, hand sanitizer bottle. I've been through these inspections with my own clinics in the past. They're going to find uh, things wrong. Things are often correctable on the site like that. Yeah. But the other sticking points they brought up, one, so there were patient complaints. It turned out that yesterday during the hearing, it came out that those patient complaints, in fact, did not exist. The second one were interviews by three physicians that they say they need to have before they can renew the license. Those three physicians are all junior doctors. They're residents or fellows who are in training. Right. And so they're not uh, employees of Planned Parenthood. The Planned Parenthood doctors already did their interviews. The other ones aren't going to do the interviews, and that's the main sticking point right now. So Okay, so the, the, the serious health concerns, and I want you to keep this in mind because we're going to move, we're going to move and, and tie these two uh, issues about, uh, you know, fetus and fetus, feti and uh, children, how they love the fetus and hate the children, okay? Uh, a, an expired bottle of hand sanitizer is what they found. <gasps> oh my God. Hey, stop my abortion. Let me see the hands. <laughs> Hands up! <laughs> a non they said there were patient complaints. Those complaints turned out to be non-existent. And they are requiring that fellows and residents who are training at the Planned Parenthood, who aren't employed by Pan pa Planned Parenthood, but instead are employed by the hospital nearby, somehow are required to give interviews to these uh, spot inspectors who only found an expired bottle of hand sanitizer as the big health concern. Now, let's move over. Let's move over to what the inspector general at the Department of Homeland Security found on his spot inspection of the El Paso del Norte Immigrant Processing Center. You love the fetus, right? An expired bottle of hand sanitizer. That's a grave health concern. Well, here's a grave health concern that regards children who these Republicans don't give a rat's ass about. These Department of Homeland Security Inspector General uh, 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 officers went and did spot inspections or pop inspections of the uh, Department of Homeland Security's, uh, you know, uh, uh, El Paso Processing Center. And you know what they found? You know what they found, everybody? Standing room only conditions at the El Paso del Norte Processing Center. That center has a capacity of 125 migrants. May 7th and 8th, the logs indicated that they were housing approximately 900 detainees the detainees are standing on toilets in their cells to make room for others to gain breathing space. Breathing space. There was a cell with a maximum capacity of 12. It was holding 76. Another with a maximum capacity of 8 was holding 41. And another with a maximum capacity of 35 people was holding 155 people. They said, I mean, they're waiting for the plague to break out. They're waiting for cholera to break out. People can't use the toilets because people are standing on the toilets so that they can breathe air. Freaks. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. President Trump threatening tariffs on Mexico in less than two weeks. 
to get action on border security. The first round of tariffs would start at 5 percent June 10th, escalate each month all the way up to 25 percent by October 1st. What? If Mexico doesn't slow the number of migrants coming to the U.S. One big question, could this derail the president's trade deal with Mexico and Canada, the USMCA? Duh. Just yesterday, the administration tried to jumpstart the approval process. The U.S. trades a lot with Mexico. Many U.S. companies rely on Mexico as a key part of their supply chains. The U.S. imported almost $350 billion in goods from Mexico last year. Mexico also the largest supplier of agricultural imports, $26 billion in 2018, and a huge export market for U.S. Uh, producers. Now, remember, Mexico will not pay these tariffs. American importing companies and then consumers will. Investors reacting to the threat from the president. You can see Dow futures are down more than 1% this morning. And Asian markets tumbled. European markets closed, opened uh, lower as well. Look, the president has grown frustrated about the border issue amid an increase in illegal crossings. Hours before this tariff announcement, DHS announced the largest group of migrants ever apprehended by Border Patrol on Wednesday. More than a thousand people detained by El Paso sector Border Patrol. Not clear the White House has the legal authority to impose tariffs on this scale. And not everyone <laughs> is on board. Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley slammed the president's move. Trade policy and border security are separate issues, he says. This is a misuse of presidential tariff authority. So when is it a bridge too far, Senator Grassley? When is it a bridge too far for you? All right, so on the Randy Rhodes After Hours podcast, which you know we always record on a, a Friday for the Sexy Liberal Podcast uh, Network, uh, we will host Austin Goolsby, who you know I have this massive crush on. It's just his very large huge gigantic it's just his really really big brain that i love and his sense of humor is uh, amazing and and you know he was he was the chair of the council of economic advisors in the obama administration so he's practically you know he's a cabinet member <clears throat> in the obama administration and they practically built this here economy that we have currently so i thought we'd spend a, a, a half hour or so with austin goolsby talking about these tariffs who pays them why it's a hor horrendous idea now the part that concerns me is the immigration part it's the part where the children it's the part where the the the, the people who are seeking some sort of asylum in this country that are seeking some sort of safety for their children who are coming from some of the most violent countries in central america hoping hoping that their children can make it here to live another day, how they're being treated, how they're being abused. That's separate from the economic uh, discussion about how we export to Mexico more than we import from Mexico and how we export to Mexico at a giant rate of exchange bigger than what we export to China. Uh, so I'll leave the economic discussion for post-show with Austin Goulds because he's, he's got a huge, gigantic... Um, he might be the reason why I'm pregnant right now. I, I just don't want to say. I just don't want to say. Oh, I'm not anymore. I'm not pregnant. It's worked. I, I'm done. <laughs> just had an abortion. But look at what's going on with, this, uh, with, with these detainees. Detainees. Oh, my God. These are human beings. Human beings. And the Department of Homeland Security did some pop inspections of some of the, uh, de the detention centers. And uh, like I said, they are standing on toilets to get some air. And the only reason why anybody, uh, you know, uh, at Border Patrol decided to complain about it was because the agents and the officers themselves are getting sick. They are experiencing very high rates of illnesses. Some of them have accelerated their retirement dates because they don't want to do this anymore. And uh, the Border Patrol told the Inspector General at DHS they're concerned about an immediate risk to health and safety, not of the children, not of the parents, not of the people, but of themselves. These are our brave men and women, yeah, of themselves. And so they're accelerating their retirement dates. Some are looking for work elsewhere. They want to get out of it. There are five Border Patrol stations and two ports of entry in El Paso, uh, eastern New Mexico and, of course, uh, greater El Paso. They were part of the unannounced inspections, okay, of the holding facilities. 
You know how they said they were going to build, uh, you know, like uh, soft-sided uh, cities in the middle of the freaking hot desert? They never did. They, they built like one. And so what you have there is 900 people crammed into a facility that is designed to hold 125 people. Now, meanwhile, here in Florida, down in an old Air Force base that we have here, Homestead Air Force Base, which is uh, south of Miami, uh, some of you may remember Homestead from uh, Hurricane Andrew days. It was just, uh, you know, decimated. And so they turned Homestead. They sold it. <clears throat> Homestead is now a private, private detention center. And that's where children, teenage children, uh, immigrating to the United States are held. So the children of the United States who haven't exactly been taught to hate yet decided that they would write all these letters. They would write letters telling the kids that are inside Homestead where no lawmakers are allowed to visit and it's a private facility and so they control it. They control who gets in and they won't let anybody come in to inspect it, to see the condition of the children that, uh, you know, Republicans love so much. They love children so much they want to protect them from the Petri dish on out of my vagina and then after it's out of my vagina you're on your own right so the kids of this country decided that they would write letters of support to the children who they view as being just like them but are in jail at a prison camp for migrant kids in homestead florida so they wrote three thousand letters these kids did telling these kids that they're not forgotten that they're not alone that they're brave, that people here in the United States care about them, that people in the United States want them here and would take them into their homes if they could and are, you know, thinking of them and praying for them and, you know, holding them in their hearts and that their lives have value and how brave they were to take this long trek to try and save their lives. And guess what happened? The Miami Herald was able to show a video of a group of children carrying boxes of these letters to the entrance of the Homestead facility. And the guards at the Homestead facility, which is a private prison camp for children, refused to hand off the letters, refused to take the letters, refused to give the kids the letters to let them know that they, that they matter to somebody. They blocked members of Congress from going into the base and the kids knew that and they wanted to try anyway. One of the kids said, we want the world to see that people care even if the kids never see it. And so what happened instead was a soccer ball was kicked over the fence and the kids wrote on the soccer ball, you are not alone. And threw the soccer ball back over the fence and the guards confiscated the soccer ball so that these kids would never ever ever believe that anybody in the United States cared for them it was it's I mean the Miami Herald is reporting it as cruelty detention traumatizes children but only the fetus matters call in connect Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Okay, everybody. Let's enter into the alternative universe of uh, Fox News. He's cousin, here's another story of a 10-year-old walks over with a note that says, my mom is in Chicago. That's it. What are you supposed to do with a 10-year-old who says, return me to my mom in Chicago, return who doesn't speak mom? English? These are oh nonstop God. stories well, are getting they, thousands a day. 45,000 unaccompanied minors since October, and they're going to be critical of our border people. It is so sad, and we welcome anyone to come in our country, of yeah, course. Sure we want kids to be reunited with their mom in Chicago, if that's even true. Um, if but that's you have to do true. it the right way so that our country knows who's the here. Right well, this way. is child exploitation at some level. Oh, they know with a child God. and with a family they get right. special treatment the blame goes on the parents you're putting these kids at risk w women who have faced terrible horrors on this trip our, our, what our agents are doing on the border is the most is, is incredibly humane right. and in incredibly difficult 
It's incredibly humane. It's incredibly difficult. Uh, it's child exploitation. You know, if you were, if you, God forbid, uh, have a grandparent or a parent who tells the story of how their parents literally took them out of Germany and put them on a ship to the United States or put them, uh, you know, uh, in, in the care of somebody in, um, oh, I don't know, uh, Sweden or Denmark during the Holocaust. Was that exploiting your children or was that trying to get your children out before they were killed? I mean, they would take the whole story of Anne Frank and turn it into some sort of a child exploitation story of a girl who was forced to live in an attic. I mean, it's just, they're so sick. It's so twisted there. And they go, a 10-year-old child who doesn't speak any English, what are you supposed to do with it? What, you think the Border Patrol doesn't speak Spanish? Do you think everyone in the United States doesn't speak Spanish? What is wrong with you? My Spanish may suck, but at least I speak it. I try to speak it, for God's sake. The Border Patrol agents speak Spanish. Half of them are from Mexico, for God's sake. What's wrong with them? This is so sick. And, and I've got to tell you, here's another couple of stories. You, you love the fetus, but you hate the child. We must close down the Missouri, the only Missouri Women's Health Center. We must close it down because of an expired bottle of hand sanitizer. Why? That's a health risk that risks the life of a woman, Right. You know what happens when women are in the marshal service and they're pregnant from, uh, you know, coming across the border? They're shackled to give birth. Did you know that? An OBGYN at the U.S. Marshal Service is shackling detained pregnant migrant women when they give birth. And then they take the baby. This country has lost its bearing. It has lost the purpose of this country. It has lost the meaning of this country. It is, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. It doesn't say, let them stand on a toilet in an overcrowded jail cell in El Paso so that they can breathe free, does it? No, this is a sick thing. Migrants in criminal custody who have babies, who are US citizens, are placed with DFPS if the mother is taken back into criminal custody and the mother has no one with lawful status to agree to take the baby. And then the other story is the OBGYN began to see patients in USMS custody shackled in March 2018 within a month of the Trump administration, publicly confirming its zero tolerance policy. What she has seen is pregnant women in Marshall's custody in the Western District of Texas with their hands and feet shackled at the time they are seeking care or attending an appointment with the OBGYN. Sometimes it's a combo of the two. Sometimes they're also shackled around their bellies. For some pregnant women migrating to the United States to seek asylum, there is no refuge to be found. If federal immigration authorities apprehend them in borderlands, they may be prosecuted and detained. In custody, they receive negligent medical care that endangers their lives. This is the Trump administration's zero toler tolerance policy at work. This is Rewire News. I suggest you uh, go look at uh, their immigration section. It's just, it's mind blowing. And I'm sitting here looking at them trying to do the same damn thing to American born, American raised, all American girls with blue eyes and blonde hair in freaking Missouri and Ohio and Kentucky and Georgia and, and, and Mississippi. Oh my God. Miss this is just crazy. And Bill Barr gives an interview where he says, you know, it's not Trump that's trying to destroy the institutions of government. Oh, no, it's not Donald Trump. It's Congress. Are you freaking kidding me? You've got the militarization, uh, the, the politicization of the military where the president is going out there and handing them Make America Great Again caps. They've got patches on their uniforms with his freaking face on it saying make air crew great again. He's got instructions going out from the White House uh, military office to low level Navy uh, officers to put tarps over John McCain's name. And I'm sure Lindsey Graham would have been available to throw his body over the bow. I don't know. Why didn't they call him? 
You know, you got uh, a, a president that insults judges. You have a, a, a Department of Justice that is now a political arm of the, the for the president. You got an attorney general who acts like the president's own personal lawyer. You have a president that gives clearances to his freaking relatives over the objection of law enforcement and over the objection of the intelligence community. He's 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 authorizing his personal attorney general to declassify documents that would would actually uh, stop the cooperation that we get with the five eyes in Europe, you know, that cooperate with us and provide like Australia, New Zealand, you know, just declassify any damn thing so that, you know, Bill Barr can use it to make some sort of an argument that Donald Trump was spied upon by, uh, you know, Alexander Downer, an Australian diplomat who seven weeks before the FBI knew that dirt had been hacked, that stuff had been hacked by a Russian military intelligence outfit, George Papadopoulos knew and was drunk in London telling a, 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 the Australian ambassador, Alexander Downer, all about it and never called the FBI. He loves freaking dictators. And he enriches himself as the president of the United States of America. Now he's going to levy some sort of a, 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 a new tax, a new tariff on everything coming in from Mexico because he thinks immigration has something to do with, if you don't want more immigration, don't hobble Mexico's economy, moron. Jesus, it's the stupidest, stupidest president and the most inhumane, indecent bastard. Oh my God, none of this makes sense, none of it. A lot to sort through here. First of all, the idea behind this, a 5% tariff to stop immigration, does that make sense? Does it make sense? Not to the U.S. markets right now, it does not, Willie, because the stock market is deeply in the red in the pre-markets right now, and we're seeing red across the board. If you're a U.S. CEO, I know you also probably think it doesn't make sense because NAFTA 25 years ago told you that it's okay to move your supply chain to, to Mexico. Mexico. You got GM that actually just closed five plants because they moved to Mexico and now you're going to hit them with a tariff on, on, on the automobiles? I, this man, I swear to God, prepare for sticker shock from everything from avocados to automobiles. The, the whole supply chain is going to be He, You know what? He'll never do it. It's a distraction from impeachment. The Randy Rhodes Show is live on RandyRhodes.com and the free Progressive Voices app for Android and iOS. Visit the App Store or ProgressiveVoices.com now. First of all, the idea behind this, a 5% tariff to stop immigration, does that make sense? Does it make sense? Not to the U.S. markets right now, it does not, Willie, because the stock market is deeply in the red in the pre-markets right now, and we're seeing red across the board. If you're a U.S. CEO, I know you also probably think it doesn't make sense because NAFTA 25 years ago told you that it's okay to move your supply chain to Mexico. We actually encouraged it. U.S. companies did that, and now they could be at risk. Here's the reality. We buy a lot more from China, but we sell a lot more to Mexico. Mexico, in fact, is about a 70% larger trading partner for U.S. companies than China is. This all coming, by the way, Willie, on the cusp of the signing of the USMCA, the unfortunately named new NAFTA, if you will. This catching everybody off guard. 5% on June 1st, 10% on July 1st, going up to the possibility of 25% on $300 billion worth of goods mm -hmm. if the president is not satisfied with many changes they make at the border, which, what does satisfied mean, Willie? What, really? what is the benchmark here? The market doesn't know. No one knows. Trump doesn't know. All right, yesterday he was talking about impeachment before he left to go speak at the Air Force Academy, where... If I had been lucky enough to go, and I was not, I would have turned my back on him. This man is a blight 
on everything that the United States stands for, law, justice, freedom, an, unpolit- an apolitical military, uh, you know, taking an oath to the Constitution, not to a person. I mean, he's just, he's so vile and he's breaking, breaking America. And it seems like he's doing it because he's being blackmailed or he's owned uh, either by, you know, debt or by, uh, you know, uh, uh, tapes. God only knows what it is. But, uh, you know, th- th- yesterday when he was standing in front of the, the, the stupid White House on his way out the door, this is what he was telling everybody, that he, had, he would have uh, uh, an announcement, a bigly announcement on, uh, uh, on, on Mexico, you know, on the border. And this is what, yeah, I got it. And this is, and this is what, uh, you know, his announcement was, that he was going to do uh, 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 escalating tariffs. And he was going to escalate them like every other week. As if in three weeks, anybody on any side of any border could make changes that would satisfy. And what satisfies him? Zero immigration, a 1% reduction. What's the benchmark here? He doesn't know because he does it by tweet. This guy is so disrespectful to every American business, to every American worker who works for an American importer. I mean, this is so sick. Well, we're going to have a statement about it, and I'm also going to have, uh, probably today, a major statement on the border. This is a big league statement, big league. but uh, we are going to do something very dramatic on the border, because people are coming into our country, the Democrats will not give us laws, they will not change laws, they will not meet, they will not do anything, they want to have open borders, they want to have crime. They Liar. want to have drugs pouring into our country. Liar. They want to have human trafficking. Liar. I'm going to be making a statement probably tomorrow, but maybe today. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. You have no idea what you're doing. No idea. And he does not have the authority to level to, to, to put tariffs in. He doesn't have the authority. This is the job of Congress. This is what Congress does. I, so what he said, the tariffs are going to go up 10%, 5% on June 10th, 10% by July, 15% in August, 20% in September, and 25% in October. Where is your plan? Where is your immigration reform plan? Where is your legislation? We have had immigration reform, bipartisan immigration reform, so many times. We had it in the Obama administration, for God's sake. We had the Gang of Eight. We had a 2013 immigration reform bill. They don't want immigration reform. They want the issue. He's un- undermining his own UMSCA, or whatever the hell that thing is called, USMCA. It's fun to be at the USMCA. That has ultra-low tariffs. That's a free trade agreement. It's NAFTA, is what it is. Federal law allows the use of tariffs only to deal with an unusual and extraordinary threat. We don't have an unusual and extraordinary threat. And usually tariffs are a, um, they're a punishment for breaking trade laws. That's what tariffs are typically used for, and Congress votes on them. He doesn't care about any of it. He just cares about re-election. He just cares about distraction. And so, you know, it's funny. Nancy Pelosi, it's not really funny. She's really, really smart, and I know people are very angry with her right now. I get it. But all she's trying to do is get all the ducks in a row. And I told you, this is going to be a real big, heavy lift because Donald Trump is uh, blocking Don McGahn from answering a subpoena. Don McGahn has, is, 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 is in contempt of Congress. He has refused to appear after being subpoenaed. The Attorney General of the United States has been held in contempt of Congress. The man who says... Donald Trump isn't destroying the institutions of the United States. Congress is. They held him in contempt. He's violating a congressional subpoena to appear. They don't care about the law. They don't care about the Constitution. They don't care that Congress has oversight duties and that they are the first of the three branches of government in the Constitution. They don't care. Nancy Pelosi is, she was on Jimmy Kimmel last night, and I can't play it because uh, I don't own the, I can't, uh, Jimmy Kimmel is a, a copyrighted thing. 
So I can't play it. But what I did do was pull the transcript so I could tell you exactly what she said. And she said, you know, that they were very excited that they had won, won three court cases already last week. Three court cases and one decision by the Department of Justice to give them documents, okay? And that uh, they are in defiance of the Constitution and she knows this. And it's clear to the Republicans in the Congress that they're in defiance of the Constitution. They know it. But she needs to make a case to the American people. The problem Nancy Pelosi is having is not necessarily Mitch McConnell and the Republicans in the Senate. It's us. It's we the people that are only four. Well, I shouldn't say only because it's growing. Forty five percent of us as as of the last Reuters Ipsos poll want this president to stand for impeachment. They want him to be indicted by Congress. That's impeachment. Right. And they want to see a trial actually occur in the Senate with evidence produced and prosecutors and uh, cross-examination of witnesses. They want it. They want to see it. But that's only 45 percent. It's growing. So what Nancy Pelosi said on Jimmy Kimmel last night, he actually asked her, are you saying you want to make sure everybody's on board before you get into something like impeachment? She said, no, I'm not saying that. We are on a path to gain information. The public deserves to know the truth and the facts. And when you go down a path like an impeachment, which is very divisive, let me just put it this way. We understand our oath of office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Apparently, he doesn't understand the oath of office. He doesn't honor the oath to protect and defend. So we know our responsibility, but because it's divisive, we have to bring people together she said we've been on that path for a while and when we do get to where we're going we're going to be ready she said she needs an iron clad case and she repeated the word iron clad two times that's what she's doing and i said to you and you know people are very um when it comes to uh, the execution of the law, people are very simple. And, you know, the law should be as well. It should be common sense, but it isn't. People think that if you are under subpoena and you don't appear, you should go to jail. You're correct in, in believing that that's the way it should flow. But it doesn't. It doesn't. In reality, what happens is Bill Barr is subpoenaed. He defies the subpoena. There's a vote. He's held in contempt of Congress. Then it goes to the court who sits on it like, like, like uh, Horton, here's a who, sits on the big fat egg and waits until the case is ripe. I mean, it's so sick, but that's what really happens. Yes, in a perfect world, he would be held in contempt and then the sergeant at arms would go and arrest him and he would be put in a, uh, some sort of a holding cell Preferably in El Paso, along with the detainees at the border. Or Homestead Air Force Base, which is now a child prison. I'd like to see him go serve some time there. But it doesn't work that way. So what she's doing is she's waiting for court decisions. She's subpoenaing documents. They're looking at the underlying evidence, which did not come with the Mueller report. Bill Barr sat on the underlying evidence. He sat on the grand jury testimony. He isn't releasing documents. They have to win in court, to get, and, the, and we have been winning. She's just getting all the ducks in a row. Otherwise, she'll subpoena people, or you know, Gerald, Gerald Nadler, judiciary, will subpoena people. They won't show up, and they'll be talking to an empty chair, and the entire country will be tuned in because there's nothing on TV, and they won't see anything. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. We are former federal prosecutors. We served under Democratic presidents. And Republican presidents. We carefully read and analyzed the Mueller report. And we all strongly believe that there is more than enough evidence to indict President Trump for multiple felony counts of obstruction of justice. Of obstruction of justice. Of obstruction of justice. Of obstruction of justice. The evidence shows that President Trump tried to stop 
limit and interfere with the Mueller investigation and other federal investigations surrounding him. How did he do that? Here's what the evidence shows. President Trump tried to fire Mueller. And then tried to get others to lie and create false evidence about it. President Trump tried to make sure that Mueller's investigation didn't focus on him or his campaign by controlling who was in charge of it and what they were allowed to look at. And he tried to prevent witnesses from cooperating with law enforcement. It's all in the report. You should read it for yourself. There's more than enough evidence to convince the jury beyond a reasonable doubt that President Trump committed the crime of obstruction of justice several times. But the Department of Justice has a long-standing policy that prevents a sitting president from being charged with a crime. That's why Mueller didn't say whether he thought President Trump obstructed justice. But if he weren't in the White House, President Trump would be charged with serious crimes. This isn't even a close case. Huh. If you or I did what President Trump did, we'd be facing prison. And no one, not even the president, should be above the law. In the words of the Mueller report, no person is above the law. So... Huh. That is uh, from Now This. And what that represents is one... 1,000, 1,000 federal prosecutors' opinions based on the law of this nation regarding whether or not Donald Trump obstructed justice several times. A felony times 10, because he did it more than 10 times, according to the Mueller report. And people are still shocked at the Mueller press conference the other day, which only lasted nine minutes, in which Mueller said that because of the OLC's stupid opinion, and it's just a memo, it's not even the law, he felt bound under the Department of Justice rules not to indict the president, and because he couldn't indict the president, he kicked it over to Congress. That is what Mueller said. People are still shocked to hear there's something bad in the Mueller. There was something bad in the Mueller report because they believe Trump and they believe, uh, uh, you know, Rudy Giuliani and they believe Fox News and they believe uh, Newt Gingrich and they believe Sean Hannity and they believe, you know, all this, uh, you know, uh, alternative universe of, of, of manufactured news. They believe that Bill Barr told the truth when Bill Barr said that, he didn't do anything. Bill Barr is lying. A thousand prosecutors versus Bill Barr is not a close call. Now, Bill Barr was interviewed by CBS News, and Bill Barr is saying that, you know, he, he feels he's in, he, that it was just a, a difference of opinion between two lawyers, Bob Mueller and himself. And so he decided he would exonerate the president because that's what he was supposed to. A thousand prosecutors agree with with the findings in the Mueller report that clearly lay out the fact that the United States was attacked in a sweeping, systematic way and that Trump expected and was very excited about getting that help from a foreign military intelligence unit. He welcomed it. He exploited it. He actually asked Russia to go ahead and hack some more after he understood that they were doing that. And they, within five hours of that July 27th, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you can find, within five hours of his, you know, a plea to Russia to go hack some more, Russia all of a sudden started hacking into Hillary Clinton's personal email server. And to this day, nobody knows how they knew where to go to get that uh, server information because it was private. And the reason why nobody knows is if you read the Mueller report is because everybody that he interviewed about this lied or destroyed documents. And the conclusion was that their obstruction materially impeded his investigation into the 140 contacts that this campaign had with Russian intelligence. 
military intelligence. He expected to benefit from it. He did benefit from it. And then he obstructed the inquiry into an attack on the United States. That's just a fact. Now, Bill Barr is, is, is lying. He gave this interview yesterday. People were just really disturbed with it. A thousand federal prosecutors disagree with his conclusions, and it's not a close call when it's a thousand to one. We saw the special counsel yesterday uh, make that statement. He analyzed 11 instances where there were possible obstruction uh, and then said that he really couldn't make a decision. Do you agree with that interpretation? Uh, I personally felt he could have reached a decision. In your view, he could have reached a conclusion. Right, he could have reached a conclusion. Uh, the opinion says you cannot indict a, a president while he's in office, but he could have reached a decision as to whether it was criminal activity. But uh, he had his reasons for not doing it, which he explained. And I'm not going to, you know, argue about those reasons. Uh, but when he didn't make a decision, the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, and I felt it was necessary for us uh, as the heads of, uh, of the department to reach that decision. Well, I mean, he seemed to suggest yesterday that there was another venue for this, and yeah, that was Congress. Congress. Well, I, I'm not sure what he was suggesting, you're but not, you know, the Department of Justice idiot. doesn't use our powers of investigating crimes as an adjunct to Congress. Okay, so, uh, you know, Bob Mueller clearly, clearly indicated that the proper venue for indicting a president based on the evidence that he found was not with law enforcement, but was with Congress. That is the proper venue for the indictment. Bill Barr is sitting there lying. He's lying. He is the president's attorney, and you cannot have an attorney general of the United States be the president's attorney. He lied. He lied about the OLC opinion. He lies about everything. Andy McCabe was also on television, and Andy McCabe was like, listen, we documented 140 contacts between this campaign and the freaking Russians. Willie, concluding that you don't have sufficient evidence to prove under the criminal law in this country a con the existence of a conspiracy is very different than concluding that all kinds of inappropriate contacts took place. I mean, we know now from the report well, something over 140 contacts between yeah. individuals associated with the campaign um, uh, contacting and having uh, interactions with uh, Russians or people connected to the intelligence services. This is unprecedented activity. So, um, you know, what has been billed as no collusion, no obstruction should probably be recast as uh, no witch hunt and no exoneration. I think that was the message that uh, Bob Mueller was telling us so yesterday. What's your suspicion then, given those two years and all the resources that Bob Mueller had, that he couldn't establish that kind of a conspiracy? Well, I think the report clearly lays out some of the challenges he had in uh, in obtaining the testimony of some witnesses yeah. and obtaining documents and evidence of communications from folks who had gone to some length to conceal or destroy those communications. So look, he had a tough hurdle to get over from the very beginning. Um, but again, read the report. We all know the details of the interactions that are laid out in that volume one. They are significant. Um, and, I, and I'll say this, too. I was struck by the amount of detail that the Mueller team put in the report about the government of Russia's activities. You have specific military units being identified, the tactics and techniques they were using to influence the campaign. It is an extraordinarily, extraordinarily high level of detail to reveal about a federal investigation. And I think it was done purposefully to show the American people exactly the seriousness of what we were confronting. Damn right. I mean, when you read the indictment of the intelligence uh, units, the military intelligence units in Russia, and you read the indictment of those 13 uh, off, uh, you know, officers, it's mind-blowing. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. He said that he couldn't exonerate the president. You looked at that evidence... No, he and didn't. He did, he did I mean, not. What's the fundamental difference between your view and his? Well, uh, 
I think Bob said that he was not going to engage in the analysis. He was, he was not going to make a determination one way or the other. We analyzed the law and the facts. And, no, you uh, didn't. You're a lying. A group of us uh, spent a lot of time doing that. You and lied. determined that uh, both as a matter of law, many of the instances would not amount to obstruction. Uh, as a matter of law. As a matter of law. In other words, we didn't agree with the legal analysis. Uh, a lot of the legal analysis and the report, it did not reflect the views of the department. You it just was said he the didn't do the analysis. Lawyer or Which lawyers. is it? Uh, and uh, so we applied uh, what we thought was the right law. That decision, offered up in a four-page summary, opened the attorney general to criticism. The response was that uh, you were too soft on the president, that actually the special counsel was a little sharper on obstruction. I was sharper. trying to state the bottom line, and the bottom line was that Bob Mueller identified some episodes. He, episodes. he did not reach a conclusion. He provided both sides of the issue, and he his conclusion was he wasn't exonerating the president, but he wasn't finding a crime either. Oh, my God, no. What he was doing was making an impeachment referral to Congress. That's what Bob Mueller did. He made an impeachment referral to the proper venue, which he believes is Congress. Bill Barr never looked at the evidence. And you know how we know that? Because he was under oath one day. And Kamala Harris, also a federal prosecutor, asked him if he looked at the evidence. And his answer under oath was no. My question is, in reaching your conclusion, did you personally review all of the underlying evidence? Uh, no, we took an accept did, 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 we accepted did Mr. Rosenstein? No, we accepted no. the statements in the report as the factual record. We did not go underneath it to see whether or not they were accurate. We accepted it as accurate and made our So made you our accepted decision. the report as the evidence? Yes. You did not question or look at the underlying evidence that supports the conclusions in the report? No. <laughs> did uh, Mr. Rosenstein review the evidence that underlines and supports the conclusions in the report, to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. We accepted the statements in the report did and anyone the characterization in your, of the evidence is true. Did anyone in your executive office huh. review the evidence supporting the report? No. No. <laughs> and then he sat on the TV yesterday and said he did. He said that he couldn't exonerate the president. You looked at that evidence. No, you didn't. And you did. I mean, what's the fundamental difference between your view and his? Well, uh, I think Bob said that he was not going to engage in the analysis. He was, he was not going to make a determination one way or the other. We analyzed the law and the facts. And no, uh, you didn't. a group of us uh, spent a lot of time doing that. No, he lied. He's lying. He's lying. And he continues to lie. He lied about, but for the OLC, Bob Mueller would have, you know, still found him innocent, right? On March 5th, we specifically asked him about the OLC opinion and whether or not he was taking the position that he would have found a crime, but for the existence of the OLC opinion. And he made it very clear uh, several times that that was not his position. Okay. Bob, what do you say about that, Bob? If we had had co confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. We did not, however, make a determination as to whether the president did commit a crime. The introduction to the volume two of our report explains that decision. It explains that under long-standing department policy, OLC. a pres president cannot be charged with a federal crime while he is in office. <laughs> that is unconstitutional. <laughs> no, Even it's if not. the charge is kept under seal and hidden from public view, that too is prohibited. <laughs> the special counsel's office is part of the Department of Justice, and by regulation, it was bound by that department policy. Charging the president with a crime was therefore not an option we could consider. I, I hope that you can see the lie. 
I understand it's 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 law and 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 opinions and memos and all that, but it's so clear that Bill Barr is a freaking spinmeister, lying sack of crap, no better or worse than Rudy Giuliani. I mean, when you have to listen to Judge Napolitano to hear something resembling the truth, you know you're screwed. I think the reason um, Mueller did not come to a conclusion on obstruction of justice is not because the evidence wasn't there. It's there. There are 10 crimes Hello? outlined. There's enough there to get an indictment on any of them if the <laughs> defendant were not the president of the United States. I think the reason is because he knew that the attorney general would never give him permission to do so. I... And he's a soldier. He's a, he's a Marine. He doesn't want to challenge and take on uh, his, you, his boss publicly. You think that the 10 things listed there there could be actually prosecuted Absolutely. as crimes? Absolutely. So do more than a thousand former federal prosecutors. Right. Even though there States. is no underlying indictment on, on oh, the conspiracy. Stop with underlying this. indictment theory is not even embraced by the present DOJ. No, I understand but that you could go forward with the crime, but you think a prosecutor would actually do that? Well, I don't know if a prosecutor would, but, there, but under the law, there's enough for a prosecutor to do so. Oh. And as far as this um, OL C, Office of Legal Counsel Opinion, it's an advisory opinion. Right. It was issued in October of, of 2000. 2000. 45 days later, the Justice Department prosecuted the President of the United States, Bill Clinton, for obstruction of justice and perjury. And 45 days after that, he pleaded guilty to a felony while still in office. So it is clear that this opinion is not a bar right. to prosecute the judge, President. You I mean, when you have to listen to Fox News to get closer to the truth than what the attorney general of the united states is saying to cbs we're screwed we have an attorney general of the united states who doesn't view his job as being the attorney general of the united states he views his job as being the personal attorney of donald j trump it's very twisted and very sick and, and then he had the nerve to sit there and say uh it's not the president that's destroying our institutions it's congress it's you bill it's you. It's you and a president who gives clearances over the objection of the intelligence community, over the objection of law enforcement, gives clearances to his son-in-law and his daughter. It's the president that moves, that withdraws troops out of Syria without even consulting with the Department of Defense. It's a president that's out of control. It's a president who, who, who says, threatens tariffs on Twitter when he doesn't have the power to level tax, uh, ta taxes, tariffs, same thing, uh, uh, against Mexico. I mean, it's just so unbelievable. It's a man that separates women and children, babies. It's a man that condones shackling women when they're giving birth uh, in, in an immigration situation. I mean, really? Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561 270 3844. 561 270. Excuse me, if you're not going to, to, to start an impeachment inquiry Accused, yeah. into Donald Trump. Really? Imagine, tell me, describe the president for whom you would start an impeachment inquiry, right? I mean, a president who abused power, a president who used the instruments of the state to go after his political enemies, a president who lied to the American people all the time. I mean, you know, just describe this hypothetical president uh, who, who, who does something that Donald Trump doesn't do all the time. Absolutely correct, sir. Yes. Eugene Robinson is absolutely correct. If you if if if, if impeachment wasn't designed for Donald Trump, then what kind of an abusive, lying sack of crap was impeachment designed for? You name me a president who deserved to be impeached more than Donald Trump, more than he deserves to be impeached. We were attacked. And the man literally obstructed the investigation into the attack because he not only welcomed it, but he asked them to do even more. Russia, if you're listening, he asked them to do even more. And after he asked them five hours later, they did. How twisted is this man? But how simple is this story? 
And now people are shocked, I tell you, shocked when Justin Amash came out and he addressed uh, the people in Grand Rapids, his district, District 3 in Michigan, and told them that if they had only read the report, they would understand that this president needed to go, that he needed to be impeached by the House and removed by the Senate. They were like, I, I had no idea there was anything bad in the Mueller report. There's something bad in there because all we heard was he was exonerated. All we heard was it was a hoax. All we heard was no collusion, no obstruction. You, what, how, how can you stand there and tell us that there's bad things in there? And his answer, because I read it. And if you read it, you'd be appalled. Appalled isn't even a strong enough word. You'd be freaked out. You'd feel threatened. You'd understand that the President of the United States hates the United States. When Donald Trump says they help the other side, for him, the other side is America. Rick in LA. Yeah, Randy, um, you know, I'm outraged by this puff piece with Mueller, this interview. Oh, with you know, Barr. in a frickin' fireplace with his, like, you know, Oh, Bill old Barr, Bill Barr, Barr not Mueller, not Mueller, Barr. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Bill, Bill Barr to justice, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're trying to humanize the guy, and, I mean, the guy is just, like, a total stiff, you know? That's, that, I guess that's my style. He's a liar concept. is what he is. He's a liar, and he's a, oh. he's a weasel. Oh, yeah. He's a weasel. He's, yeah. you know, he reminds me of all of those conservative lawyers that have uh, advocated for the unitary executive theory, which is a king. You know, they give it fancy yeah. words, but it's just, hey, America, you know what you need? You need a king. You need somebody unencumbered by the rule of law, unencumbered by the right. Constitution. You need a politicized military that's loyal to the president. That, right. That'll that set you straight. I mean, these yeah, are yeah, like yeah. the, the John the Addingtons. Not to the Constitution, that, but to the president. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like it was like Bush's no. Department of Justice. You remember, like we had little agent Starling and she testified that she thought she took an oh. oath to the president. Remember? Right. Oh, how could we forget? And she went to Liberty University, if I recall. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the substantive point that I was going to make is let's not forget what this Office of Legal Counsel is. That, that they say a sitting president can't be indicted. And now they're basically, they came out with an opinion May 19th, which concludes the president has a constitutional right to prevent any of his current or former advisors from testifying before Congress, for why no matter Congress what wants the testimony. Mm-hmm. So they're basically saying you can't indict a sitting president. The only remedy is impeachment. This is one OLC opinion, the 2000 one that you mentioned. And now they're coming out with a new opinion, which basically says, look, you can't even investigate gather the information necessary to determine whether he can be impeached. Right, because you so can't, you can't like, investigate. You know, the only thing Mueller had going for yeah. him, and he explained this from the podium, was that, you know, he said, I, we knew going in, which is really pretty twisted, but that he knew mm-hmm. going, and this is why I am so disappointed in Bob Mueller. But he said, going in, we knew we couldn't indict a sitting president because of the OLC rule, mm-hmm. but it didn't say we right. couldn't investigate him. So now the OLC says, oh, and by the way, you can't investigate him. Yeah, yeah, not if it's Congress. <laughs> Only DOJ can investigate <laughs> the president. I mean, except th- that th- you can't hold the president yeah. accountable through law enforcement agencies. Right, 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 right. So he is a king, he is a unitary executive. And, I mean, he acts like it. Look, look this whole decision to, to impose tariffs, oh my God. you know, on Mexico. Mm. I mean, it's, 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 it's totally ridiculous. And, you know, I think we've got to get the nomenclature right. We've got to say they're imposing tariffs on the American people. Of course. As opposed to on some other country. Uh, we've got to change how we're characterizing it because we ultimately will pay for it. Well, of course we'll like pay for it. $1,300 to the cost of each car. That's 13, what I heard. That's what I heard, too. $1,300 $1, per yeah. car. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy. So, I mean, you know, the problem is, you know, George W. Bush never faced justice, and this whole unitary executive was sitting out there, you know, in the in the uh, you know in the ether, and it comes back once you get another corrupt president coming in, and it's usually a Republican. 
It, well, that's a, because Republican. Republicans really don't believe in the Constitution. Republicans don't believe in the rule of law. They don't think the law no. applies to them. Uh, they think right. that money in politics is a good thing. It's speech, right? And so the more right. the more right. money, you know, sloshing around the swamp, the better it is. You should be able to go through right. the revolving door, check, you know, punch your ticket as a Congress member, and then go to K Street and make four or five hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, I, this is this is their view of good clean government this is their view right so right. every yeah, time they, every know, time they, we try to you know uh, uh, roll back uh, the money in politics every time we try and mm-hmm. you know right the wrong or fix the economy or you know get health care to more people they come in and they undo it yeah i mean i'm still waiting for the 21st freaking century randy what, me what happened too, to man. It? me too where's my flying car i know <laughs> i know i'm with you i'm totally with you all right well Great show. Thanks. Enjoy your beer clock. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, beer clock is uh, is beer 30 now or, you know, because uh, we do the After Hours podcast. And today, I'm really excited because today, well, talking about all this tariff stuff, uh, we'll, we'll explore the economics of it, why it adds $1,300 to the cost of a car with Austin Goolsby, who pretty much designed this unpenetrable, uh, almost crash-proof economy when he was the uh, 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 chair of the Council of Economic Advisors to Barack Obama, something that this president takes credit for, really was the brainchild of my secret boyfriend, Austin Goolsby, who will be on the Randy Rhodes After Hours podcast at Beer (laughs) O'Clock. And then we'll post it, and I'll tweet about it, and hopefully he will too before he goes to dinner with his beautiful wife, who I resent. (laughs) I'm only kidding. I don't know her. I have no idea. I know he's happily married. However, this is a very twisted time in history, and when we look back on it, it's going to be like looking back on Bush. And all these people, all these people, like today I was driving to work, and there was a guy with a pickup truck with a tool chest in the bed. You know the one I'm talking about? The aluminum one with the ridges And it said, I will never be a libtard. And I really wanted to flip him off, but you know what? I just said to myself, self, you need to feel sorry for this dude. He drank the Kool-Aid. Four. Did Mueller intend for Congress to act on the information laid out in his report? Well, here's what Attorney General Barr had to say about that. Yeah, I don't think Bob, Bob Mueller was suggesting that that uh, the next step here was for him to turn this stuff over for to Congress to really? act upon. That's not why we conduct grand jury investigations. Now, we can't say whether or not Robert Mueller wants Congress to attempt impeachment or even to further investigate President Trump, but he made it very clear that the only remaining avenue for any further action constitutionally is through Congress. The opinion says that the Constitution requires a process other than the criminal justice system to formally accuse a sitting president of wrongdoing. It also ends, the Mueller report does, with no man is, no person is above the law. And there's a footnote in the Mueller report where I disagree with Jake Tapper. It is patently obvious that Bob Mueller intended for this to be the first step and that the next step would be impeachment in the House of Representatives, an impeachment inquiry in the House of Representatives. There, it is in the Mueller report, Jake. I don't know why you actually uh, couched it that way. I disagree with you. I mean, for me, it was never a question of whether the president was fit for office. He is not. It was never a question of whether he has abused his powers. He has. Yes. Whether he obstructed, he certainly has. Right. And I believe he and his cohorts conspired with the Russians. To me, it was an effective way to move forward in this investigation. What was the best strategy? And I attempted for all these three years that I've been watching this, uh, sadly, because it's been three years since my intel committee started to get brief about Russian meddling in the democratic process. Hmm. I, I tried to be the reasonable voice that talked about getting to the truth so the American public can help us make that decision and that we did, did, couldn't get ahead of them. But, uh, you know, the events in the last couple of weeks just made it impossible for me to stay where I was. Uh, the fact that there is obstruction after the fact, uh, that's how I describe the fact that 
Clearly, the president, in detailed uh, analysis by the special counsel, obstructed prior to his release of that report. What's maddening is he and his office and the attorney general have obstructed after the fact. They've made getting subpoenas answered, getting the unredacted report uh, available to Congress impossible. Right. So how are we reasonably going to make a decision as to whether other crimes and misdemeanors were uh, were conducted Committed. without getting this information. So at this point, we have nothing to lose. And uh, I think opening impeachment inquiry will help us get that information. And to your point, I think it will help educate the American public, who obviously most have not read the Mueller report. And their first blush with the Mueller report was a lie by the attorney general right. that the president was exonerated. That's uh, Mike Quigley uh, of the Intelligence Committee. And, you know, he was a no on impeachment. And then he saw uh, Bill Barr lie and he saw the attorney general of the United States uh, assume the position. Yeah, the position all right, uh, of Donald Trump's personal attorney shirking his duty to the Constitution as well. And so on Wednesday, just so you know, on Wednesday, we had 38 Democrats who were willing to say that they were pro impeachment inquiry beginning as of today there are 52 and growing before Mueller came to the podium less than 40 percent of the united states wanted impeachment and now and this was before Mueller actually hit the podium this uh, particular reuters ipsos poll that's in yesterday's homework had 45 percent of the american people asking for an impeachment in inquiry to begin. And that was before Mueller. It was before Mueller. And, and people, I swear to God, they are shocked, I tell you, shocked to hear there's something bad in the Mueller because they have been lied to systemically, sweepingly, just like the interference. It has been a managed, gigantic propaganda effort launched against the american people by this administration and it's it's quite disgusting it's really it's it's right up there with the the weapons of mass destruction lie except that that was an invention of the american government and this is an invention of a foreign adversary which makes it i don't know so many people died in that iraq war it makes it kind of nauseating uh, but the idea that we have an asset, unwitting or witting, I, I would say witting because he asked for help from the Russian government. And the Russian government is, you know what they're doing? You know what? He's, he's over there trying to break up NATO for them, right? And in the meantime, Russia's taken Syria. And in the meantime, North Korea is, uh, you know, they executed, uh, uh, what's his name? Chol, Kim, Kim Hyuk Chol who had his photograph taken with President Trump in, uh, you know, uh, 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 negotiations, nuclear negotiations. Kim Chuck Ol, uh, uh, Chol was taken out and executed. He was, he was shot by, on orders of uh, Kim Jong-un for failure to achieve any of the goals of the nuclear summit. Donald Trump's in love with this dictator who killed his own uncle, his sister, by the way. Kim Jong-un's sister has not been seen for a really long time. Uh, but we know that the chief nuclear negotiator was executed, uh, we believe, yesterday, or at least that's when uh, the news broke in, uh, that, that uh, Kim Hyuk-chol was executed by firing squad, oh, I'm sorry, in March, along with four other foreign ministry officials for failure to achieve their goals with Donald Trump in the summit. So check this out. After that happened, Russia, Putin, goes and meets with uh, Kim Jong-un. And Kim Jong-un now feels like he's got protection from Russia and launches some uh, missiles in violation of the UN uh, 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 you know, uh, conventions. And Donald Trump said, well, it doesn't bother me. That's because Putin wanted in on North Korea. Putin pushed Donald Trump away and said, no, I'm, I want North Korea. Also, China is now looking to Russia. And Syria belongs to Russia. This is a country with the GDP. All that land, you look at a map of Russia, it's humongous. And their gross domestic product is about the same as the state of New York. And they have this kind of influence in the world. How? How?
because we have a president that literally hates the United States enough to cede leadership to Putin. And I don't know if it's, you know, his emotions, his hatred, or if it's something else. And we won't know because the investigation was obstructed by him. Isn't that something? All right, Chris and Kona, Hawaii. Hawaii. Uh, hi, Rick. Hi, Hawaii. Hi. Hey, I, I, I've got a quick solution to how to get Trump to get on board and sell the whole impeachment process. Uh, what's, what's more important to him than himself? Ratings. Yes. TV ratings. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. And tell him he'll go down as the number one rated tv rated president of all time <laughs> and and then we get all these idiots that are, on, that are on the fence and don't know what's going on to watch tv it's the only way it is get it on tv i agree get it on tv and i this agree idiot will will go for it 100 percent. he's going to be the number one rated president of all time <laughs> so have a great weekend randy thank you that's how nancy pelosi thinks that's exactly how she's playing this uh scott in dallas uh, Randy, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, God, there's so much to talk about, but I'll, I'll be real fast. Okay. Um, I, I was, I was listening to everything you were saying on, on when I was on, on the way there, but, and I agree with everything in it. And what Nancy's doing is, is like everybody's reiterated is she's working through the process. And I believe what she's doing was what the, something somebody's not brought up yet is that I believe that she's getting all the laying the groundwork, getting all the evidence. So that even these coward Republican senators will have to vote indict when they go after the impeachment vote. They'll have to remove them. Yes. I mean, yes, yes, yes. I really do believe that she is trying to build an ironclad case that is so convincing that even, uh, you know, the, the idiots, the Grassleys and the Lindsey Grahams and all those, yes. uh, you know, people over there that are coward. Cowards who are loyal to uh, a man instead of this country and our constitution and our rule of law will have no choice but well, to remove him. Yes, I think well, that's right. I mean, I mean, if Barack Obama had done a tenth of what is oh happening with this guy, it, it, hell would have come, hell fell down from the sky. You're so right. Become, that's you know and, who was on and, TV and, saying and, and, exactly and, that. And and like I said, I said it. I've been saying it on the radio uh, for, or whatever and, we're on now. You know, for years and years. Uh, but but the truth is the truth is William Cohen, the Republican senator, the Republican House member, the Republican Secretary of Defense, yeah. said if Obama Bill Barr's a corrupt too. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's got to go too. And I think Pence too, because Pence is the biggest. And I said this from the beginning too that they will they will go for both of them because Mike Pence is the biggest enabler of this lawless president, and he's an accessory after the fact as well. Because he knows all this stuff. And he's always known it. He's known about Flynn. He's known about Michael Cohen. And remember, the president is still an unindicted co-conspirator in the hush money payments. Right? That's who your president is. Have a great weekend. Support the show, please.